My name is Benjamin Miller and welcome to my video of the skeletal system. To begin, what is the skeletal system? The skeletal system is all the bones in the human body as well as the tendons, cartilage and ligaments that connect the bones together. The skeletal system consists of 270 bones for an infant and 206 bones for an adult. So what does it do? The skeletal system provides support, protection and produces blood cells. The skeletal system also assists in movement and stores nutrients and minerals. The first type of bone is the short bone. These bones tend to be small in size and only provide minimal to little movement. These bones include, but are not limited to, the carpals and the tarsals. The second type of bone is the long bone. These types of bones are the largest bones in size compared to the other types of bones and contains the blood cell producing bone marrow. These bones include the femur, humerus and tibia. The next type of bone is the flat bone. These bones are strong and flat and provide protection to the vital internal organs. These types of bones include the scapula, rib cage and cranium. Lastly is the irregular bones. These bones are irregular in shape and do not fit into the other categories. These bones mostly protect the nervous tissue and also act as an attachment point for muscles. Example of these ink bones include the spinal cord bones and sacrum. There are two distinct categories of the human skeleton. The axial skeleton, which is the centermost skeletal bones, which consist of the skull, spine, ribs, and saccharin, and also the appendicular skeleton, which are bones that are branched off from the axial skeleton, which includes the arms, legs, and pelvis. Next, we'll be talking about the major bones of the human body, which will be divided into four categories, which is the head, thorax and pelvis, arms, and legs. Without going into too much detail, the two major bones of the head include the cranium and the mandible. The major bones of the thorax and pelvis include the clavicle, rib cage, sternum, coccyx, cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, sacrum and pervic girdles. Next we have the major bones of the arms, which include starting from the top, the scapula, humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. Lastly we have the major bones of the leg, which include the femur, patella, fibula, tibia, tarsals, metatarsals and phalanges. So what is a joint? A joint is a point where two or more bones meet. And joints allow the skeletal system to stay in its body frame and can allow a certain kinds of movement. There are three main types of joints, fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. Firstly, we'll begin with the fibrous joints. This type of joint is only held tightly by ligaments, the result of which restricts any movement. An example of this type of joint is the suture lines located in the cranium. Secondly, cartilaginous joints. Cartilaginous joints are bones that are connected by cartilage. This allows some movement, however, it is restricted and cannot handle high pressure loads on these joints. These joints include the spinal cord, which each vertebrae is connected via cartilage disc. Lastly is the synovial joints. Synovial joints are the most common type of joint in the human skeleton. The bones of the joint are enclosed in a cavity and a fibrous capsule, which is then strengthened with ligaments. The capsule contains a memory that secretes a synovial fluid, which allows the cartilage padding of the two articulating bones to be nourished and lubricated. The result of this type of joint allows the bones to be freely movable. There are six types of synovial joints based on the different shapes and movements of each joint. The first type of synovial joint is a plain joint. 
This type of synovial joint relies heavily on the gliding of two flat surfaces against each other. This joint does not provide any movement in any planes and is found in the intercarpals and intertarsals. The second type of synovial joint is the hinge joint. A hinge joint is a bone that moves along a cylindrical surface of another bone, allowing movement in one plane. Examples of this joint include the elbow and the knee. This joint is particularly useful for running and throwing movements such as sprints and javelin. Next we have the pivot joint. Pivot joints occur when one bone rotates over another bone or a sleeve of ligaments. Synovial joints that are considered to be pivot joints include the head rotating on the atlas bone this on the cervical vertebrae and the order and the radius. This joint allows movement in two planes and this type of joint is used in various martial arts such as Taekwondo when punching. Next is the saddle joint. Saddle joints are the result of one bone sliding and gliding across another bone which has a concave head. The saddle joint is found in between the carpals and metacarpals of the thumb and allow the thumb to move in multiple planes. It provides stability for grabbing items with the hand. Our second and last synovial joint is the bowl and socken joint. The bowl and socken joint has the largest range of movement and is created when a spherical end of one connects with a cup-like structure of the end of other end of a bone. This type of joint occurs at the pelvic girdles and the femur and the shoulder. This type of joint is for sports that use large movements of the arms and legs, such as AFL kicking and rowing. Lastly is the condyloin joint. The condyloin joint is similar to the saddle joint, however the joint reaches its movement from a convex bone tip structure. This occurs between the metacarpals and the phalanges, or the knuckles, and the, and the wrist. This joint allows movement in two planes, and the joint is essential for catching and gripping any ball used in sport.